Welcome everyone to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Tonight we're going to go out to the West Coast where we find Huntington Beach, California driver, 12-year-old Jake Bowman. Jake, how are you doing this evening? Pretty good. Just got done with school. So you just got done with school. I, I, I noticed that you said done with school, not home from school. So you're basically taking classes virtually there in your house. Tell us just a little bit about how that's working out. Um, it's, I say it's a little bit easier. Um, not a lot of homework. Class is a little bit shorter. So uh, now we have, um, it's a little bit easier. So, so they're checking all good. the boxes that you like. So when it comes time for you to physically go back to school, you're going to be like, I think I'm pretty good with just doing school online. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what's been going on over the winter time when you've not been racing. Um, I, I went snow skiing for my ski week for one week in Utah. That was fun. Um, we went. I go to my vacation home and stayed home other than school. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the skiing. Are you a good skier? Um, I say intermediate. Intermediate. So uh, again, are you a snowboarder, or a regular skier, or? What what is what is Jake's specialty? Uh, regular skier. Regular. All right. And I note one thing else that you've been doing a lot of simulator. I happen to know that you're sitting in front of your simulator right now. So, um, you know, in a typical week, how many hours a week do you actually spend on the simulator? A week. Um, I say an hour a day. <clears throat> I'm gonna try. I try an hour a day, depending on homework. And now I can do it a lot more because we don't have um, regular school. So we get down, I think, an hour earlier or something like that. So it's pretty good. And we had the Race Face Academy with Kelly Jones. And how did that work out? I, I know that you guys did, I want to say you guys did like nine weeks. You did 90-minute sessions. Um, and then you guys got a lot of data feedback, so you did some debriefing after the races and stuff. My question to you is, how much of that information are you going to be able to carry over to your late model? A lot. Most of like the setup stuff, the starts, like say maybe this year, if I'm going to late model race, you can't start in like a higher gear. You don't spin the tires. So I think we had like three classes on starts, and that was pretty fun. Awesome. So I'm going to expect you to be gaining at least one to two positions then every start. I'm just kidding. All right. So let's talk a little bit about um, some of the racing that's been going on over the winter time. Because while most drivers are just now getting started, or well, most drivers right now are kind of on hold, um, you've got almost 20 races in the books. And you're going to be competing for a national championship and the U.S. INEX Legend Car Young Lions Series, but how do you think this layoff is going to affect that? Um, I, th I think it's going to pretty much not bad because I don't know if they're going to let the East Coast guys race before us, but if they do, it might affect us a little bit. Yeah, well, I, I don't think I, I really don't think that's going to happen. I think when it when it comes time for um, you know for the the, the uh, racetracks to open back up and whether or not they let fans come in or not I think that probably will happen pretty consistently across the country so I don't I don't think that's going to be a big issue for you so uh, once you get back on schedule how many races do you have scheduled in your legend car this year um, I think I have 60 something races or not in my legend plus madero so probably like 52 50 50 races in the legend that, that, that's a lot of racing man and if i'm not mistaken where do you where do you rank right now as far in in the national rankings as far as a a young lions driver um for the oval it shows third on the list i don't think they've updated in a while since i had i raced in tucson and I got young lines, two young line wins, so I, I think I would be first in road course and 
Okay, well, that, that's pretty good then. So at least, uh, like I said, you've got a lot of time on the track why a lot of people have not have been basically setting home and now are home uh, probably for uh, a little bit uh, longer. So which tracks are your favorite and which ones are most challenging? I know that you said you've been running some ovals and you've been running some, uh, some road courses. So if you had to rank those right now, uh, where, where do you like to race at and where do you dread going to race at? Um, my favorite track is the Boring because I like the banking and it's really fast, so I like that. Um, I say the hardest track I've been at, I say Texas, Motor Speedway, the, the, like the little Texas Motor Speedway outside. That was probably my toughest last year. Um, I hope it's going to be better this year, even though like, they postponed it because of the virus. But I think it's postponed. I don't know when it's going to be, but right. I feel like it's going to be Now, you talked a little bit about the road course racing, and you did that. That was, I believe, that was called the Silver State um, kind of showdown thing, and that was at Vegas. And if I'm, if I'm correct here, you've got five wins and eight top fives in eight starts. That's pretty impressive. All right, so up next was the Chili Willy. Give me your results and highlights uh, from what was going on down there. Um, one, one day, I think it was the first day, I got second, and it was just be qualified, I think, third. Third or fourth, just because I'm not sure. It was like next up on timing. Um, but the third day uh, uh, was okay. I think uh, we got like third in qualifying. And for the main event, um, I sort of got taken out when I was entering three. And I just got pushed from behind and I got loose. And I just spun up, didn't hit the wall, and then four more cars just come piling into me because there were so many cars. Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing the pictures. That tore your car up pretty bad, didn't it? Yeah, it broke the whole, like, um, seat frame below behind my back. Broke that. Yeah, so I know you had to do some car rebuilding in that before you actually headed out here to the East Coast uh, where you were at Inverness. Uh, Florida for the Citrus County uh, Winter Nationals and I was able to go down and see you run one day there so give us just a little a quick little recap about how the the uh, Winter Nationals went. Uh, it was great. Um, it was just the best. I love the track. Um, the facility was nice and I th think I got second and two top three and two thirds out of the whole week. Okay. All right. So that's a pretty that's a pretty successful deal there because there was a lot of cars there. Now I know that you just competed in the first two of seventeen different races at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in the Bull Ring, and you brought home two wins there. What makes you so good at that track? Uh, mostly Donnie St. Hours. The car is always perfect. Just a little adjustments that we make to the track. How it depends on rain or how the sun is hitting it, how much heat, and driving driving the car, um, experience there, that's one thing. All right, so let's switch gears a little bit right now, and let's go talk about the 5150 Junior Late Model Series. Um, I know you've been doing a little bit of testing there as well. Um, I know that there was quite a few tests before last weekend. Last weekend, I know that you were there on Thursday and Friday, and unfortunately, we didn't get a race on Saturday. Um, but how, how has it been going so far this year um, as far as kind of gelling with the, with the Nate Clower Motorsports team and, and uh, getting that junior late model prepared to go after that championship in 2020? Yeah, it sucks that the race was canceled, but we had open practice on Friday, so that was still great. We still have more seat time in the car. So hope to be better in, I don't know if they're going to count at race one still or race two. I don't know what they're going to do. But I think we tested a week before or two weeks before the actual race. We were pretty good. And the race weekend, we were still pretty good. And I hope to get better in next weekend or whatever. So. 
TV. So this is your second year with Nate Clower Motorsports. And you know, kind of give us your thought process and what you think about being able to race with that team. Uh, the team's amazing. There's always guys around to help. There's so many there's like so many guys you don't even know doing stagger and everything, cleaning the car, all up to changing tires. Yeah, I know when we were out there, if there was like a piece of dust that landed on the car, somebody was cleaning it in a hurry. And this year, I noticed that you're going to be sporting a new number. So share with all the fans what your new number is going to be for the 2020 season in that junior late model. Uh, my number is going to be 71 because it's the same as my legend car. That's the number one I started with when I was like seven. That's what I started with. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm happy to have it on my car. All right, so as you said earlier, you finished fourth in your first series, first season as a rookie. So what are your goals heading into 2020 uh, for the for the 5150 Junior Late Model Series? Win some races and we'll get the championship. Win some races and go get the championship. Well, that's a good way to do that because uh, that kind of worked out for Joey East last year. Speaking of Joey East, Let's talk about your teammates a little bit. You've got two new teammates that are on your junior late model side, and that would be Grant Thompson and Cassidy Hines. So what's your thoughts about having those teammates? Um, they're awesome teammates. Um, I met Cassidy at PRI, PRI um, a couple weeks ago, and she's really nice. Grant, he's really funny. And, and of course, Joey. Last year, he helped me a lot with lines and, and brake pressure and everything. Well, it'd be great having Joey around to kind of give you some uh, some pointers as thing goes through. But but I know that you guys are really becoming very very close friends, and I think that's a um, I think that's a major advantage for being a you know being on Nate Clower's team and being a part of the Race Face team. Um, a lot of young racers don't get to experience teammates up until the point that they get up into the higher, um, I should say the higher levels of NASCAR to may maybe the ARCA series, but definitely like the truck series and the Xfinity uh, to where you actually have a teammate where you get to share information and you have it, the opportunity to be able to lean on each other. And um, I think that's gonna pay big dividends for you um, because that's something that, like I said, you're gonna get to experience that most drivers don't. So outside of the legend car and the junior late model car, do you ever do you have anything else planned for the 2020 season? Uh, I don't know. I might run one dirt race in my mod car, and maybe not. But... All right. Well, we just got a few minutes left here. Do you want to give a shout out to any of your sponsors? Uh, I want to thank Nick Clark Motorsports, um, Mike Nick, of course, State Classy Meats. Red, lab, red Label Beef Jerky, um, Donnie Sinauers from my legend car, and, uh, and Race Face, of course, making this drive and five, everything, Race Face Spotlight, TV. All right, well, Jake, thanks for spending some time with us this evening. To keep up to speed with Jake, visit his website at jakebowmanracing.com and follow him on Facebook at Jake Bowman Racing and on Instagram at JBRRacing71. You can also subscribe to Jake's monthly newsletter on his Facebook page and also on his website in his fan zone. And remember, if you've missed any of our Race Face Spotlight episodes, you can catch up at raceface.tv on demand. My name is Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here real soon.